And then I typed it up and submitted it and got a really wonderful rejection where they said, keep trying. And, you know, they might've been just being nice, but that's their fault. I did keep trying. (laughs) So (laughs) they shouldn't have encouraged me. Hey everyone, this is Kim O'Neill from the Every Day is a New Day podcast and live show, and you're listening to the Going North podcast with the hilarious Dom Brightman. Be sure to subscribe to his show so you don't miss any episodes, and remember, every day is always a new day. And today on the Highlight Reel Builder for Authors, known as the Going North Podcast, you're going to be in for a treat today, folks. You're going to be in for a treat today. Just think of this as one of those six foot tall white chocolate Hershey kisses, my friends. That's right. You're going to be in for a treat because today's author, my goodness, an award winning and USA Today best-selling author you know it's ready for this show that writes spicy stories full of mystery comedy adventure suspense romance and supernatural mayhem and when this fabulous author is not dabbling in fiction she's arm wrestling with the two kids and attempting to seduce her husband as well as arguing with their sassy cats so let's give it up for the fabulous ac herself not air conditioned but miss ann charles how you doing today ann i'm doing great thank you for that great introduction that was awesome Ah, uh, yeah. When I was doing my usual snooping on the guests before they pop on the show, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and use this one. This one's, one's pretty fun. Good. Good. It's all true, especially those, the cats. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> I'm a cat. I'm not a, a crazy cat woman, but I'm borderline. So you know, <laughs> I talk to them a lot and they really yell a lot. So I have a good time with them. Ah, meow. <laughs> I love, and I love, you know, I'd have dogs because I really love dogs too, but we travel so much with signings and whatnot. So I can't do that to a dog, but the cats, you leave them as a pack and then you come home and they start eyeing you like you're the next meal because you left them so long. You know, if, if we had a dog, it might actually be a better come home process than the cold <laughs> shoulders and the angry hisses. <laughs> Cats are funny. You know, people think you can leave them for a long time, but uh, they have emotions about that. It's like, I'm on life number eight and you leave me here myself <laughs> for a week. <laughs> exactly. And you know, I hate that other cat that's here. <laughs> exactly. Because I was here first, darn it. Uh-huh. That's so true. Ah, uh, yes, indeed, me out oh, indeed. But it ain't just about cats, it's about you. My goodness. Decorated author, multiple titles, best selling author, multiple books, multiple series. It's like, where did it all begin? It's kind of like multiple personalities, isn't it? <laughs> 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 What's next? I mean, I think it's already there the way you jump around between series and you change, you know, hopping heads. So, slightly there as well. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I'm sure the heads hop a lot around in the books, too, since it's a little paranormal goodness. Yeah, yeah, that's supernatural. That's a whole element of fun that uh, it's great. It makes it it's so takes it outside of the just the regular crimes and let's up it a notch, you know. Oh, yeah, that's right. Putting some weed on it metaphorically, right? <laughs> so true it's legal now uh arizona voted that in so we'll see (laughs) oh boy (laughs) we might i was thinking we might not want to add that in (laughs) where's it gonna go then uh north (laughs) (laughs) yep oh my goodness well speaking of north my goodness so my feeling is saying on a bit more about who is the amazing Anne herself, because I'm sure I forgot a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, boy. Really? You want me to talk more about myself? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know. Just a mom and a writer and a wife and a, I don't know. Writer defines so much of it. It's, you know, and I am um, independent indie, as they like to call us. Uh, I wasn't always. I started um, when I first published 
Nearly Departed in Deadwood, the first of the Deadwood series that I write. In 2011, I formed a small press with my agent. And for the first three to four years, I was a small press publisher. We had other authors as well. But then in about 2014, I, I was running out of time and I had younger kids still. And I just knew um, I had to make a choice at that point to be a publisher or an author. And so then I went to author and left the public, the press that we had together and went for solo. So since then I've been independent, which means, uh, you know, you're kind of an entrepreneur and you run all parts and there's parts you really love and there's parts you really hate. And, um, for example, bookkeeping, I, Oh my gosh, I spend a day before I start bookkeeping, walking around the house, just moaning and complaining and avoiding it. And then finally I do it. And then, and then I wait for the next month <laughs> to <it's> <laughs> happen again. <laughs> it's, it's bad. It's just not my thing. But anyway, there's a lot of wonderful stuff about being indie and, and getting to go forth on your own. And then there's a lot of super stressful, but I think it's the same, you know, even with you, if you're with a bigger publisher, everything has its goods and bads. So I feel fortunate that I have found enough readers who share my uh, sense of humor and wonder, and we have a great time on the page together. And with their support, I'm able to do this full time. Uh, so in the end, it's wonderful. And I get to talk to people like you. This is so much fun. You've made my Monday morning great. Oh, sweet. With all the R's. Oh, it's great. It is. <laughs> it's, it's like Tony the Tiger. Great. <laughs> good. All righty. My impression game is still on fleek. All right. Good. That's what I'm talking <laughs> about. <laughs> yes, indeed. And it's so powerful, too, because, yeah, you've been in both worlds and heck, even in terms of like when it comes to publishing books and then you have a huge background in writing like you had to actually take english 101 four different times because you went to four <sighs> different schools if not mistaken right you read that somewhere <laughs> that is so sadly true oh they beat english 101 into me i resisted three times and by the fourth time i said okay fine english 101 Yes, I, I went to many different colleges. I did the 10 year degree where you live life and then you take school around it. And every time I transferred, nobody liked the previous English 101. It's, it's like, no, that's no good. They're, they're, they're a crappy college. And I was like, they're a great <laughs> college. They're accredited. Nope, take it again. Oh boy, I, by the end, I always joke that I could write a two page paper about you know, paper clips. If you wanted me to, I can just tell you, I can talk and talk about anything on the page now. <laughs> so is it like one of those internet memes where all the paper clips are surrounding one paper clip and an intervention? <laughs> Maybe. I actually think I thought about it once, uh, writing one for one of my English 101 classes, and it was more murder. I think somebody killed someone with a paper clip. So I know that's a horrible you'd have to tie him up to make that work, I guess. See, I put already too much thought into that. So we should probably stop in case something comes out with someone murdered by a paperclip. Then the feds are here. I gotta be a sick it's bastard ugly. to do that. My God, even John Wick needed a pencil. Like, come on now. Like, <laughs> I know. And, and you know, that's what's funny is I started out way back when, when I was trying to write, um, I'd read a lot of romances growing up, as well as Stephen King and Louis L'Amour and Westerns. But I tried romance and I just don't do the emoting, they call it, enough on the page. I kept getting um, in the feedback I'd get from editors and uh, agents was more emoting. Um, so then I switched to killing people on the page with mystery and that seemed to work for me. Sadly, you know, makes my husband kind of look at me twice, but then it worked. And then adding supernatural, all the freaky stuff really made it shine. So that's kind of how I ended up here, but I still love just a little romance. It's still there. I can't help that. Uh, so that's why it's attempting to seduce your husband because he saw the murder scenes. Okay, that makes sense. 
exactly chasing him around no no i'm just this is a butter knife i swear i'm making you toast <laughs> <laughs> it's like darn she's hot but darn she might kill me <laughs> <laughs> there you go oh, but my goodness my goodness so with all of your fabulous books combining multiple genres into one and that gave and really finding your lane, what we'll probably say was probably one of the biggest things you learned in the process besides of the lack of emoting on the page? Um, boy, you know, what I learned was I had tried studying, you know, different books and different ways of learning how to write well and hook readers. Uh, and there's some great books out there, but what, what really um, taught me was movies. I, I started looking at the movies. I'm one of those people that can watch a movie over and over and over. Uh, just, I, I find myself studying it. Why do I love this dialogue, you know, in this particular scene? Why does this scene give me chills or make me laugh without even them talking? That kind of a thing. And it really taught me uh, how to enter a story, enter a chapter. Um, just like in movies, you know, you walk on scene with the, you know, whoever the point of view is, point of view character. It's the same for me in books. I, when I think up a scene, I see it as how would this start in a movie? You know, painting the picture, painting the room if necessary to make it scary, just as the reader goes into it. And, and so I, I learned that, you know, of all the books, the, there's a lot of wonderful books on how to out there. But for me, uh, I'm a visual learner. And the best thing I can do is study the movies that I love and break them down and figure out how to make that happen on the page, which is tricky, you know, because we can't see <clears throat> someone frown or someone throw, you know, raise their arms and question. So you have to be able to put that on page. And it's a fun challenge for me. Ah, uh, amen to that. Amen to that. Because it's so darn true. Because that's like the biggest challenge I see on the outside looking in as a <clears throat> with writing a fiction novel. Because you got to keep folks entertained and engaged, and you got to be descriptive enough to where they can actually picture it in their head so that things make sense. Right. And, but yet keep it fast paced. You don't want to bog them down in details about a room. You just want to give them just enough to make them, you know, kind of have chills already and be, you know, that feeling of why are we in this room? Should we really be here? Let's get out of here, man. So yeah, finding that balance and it's taken years. It's not something that just, oh, light came on and genius, you know, popped on. <laughs> far from that. It's a lot of practice and practice and testing and practice. Oh yeah, that's right. Practice makes excellent indeed. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. That's right. And yet yeah, actually had 20 plus years of <laughs> having practice, if not mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I started writing, the first book I wrote was back in 95, 96. And I hand wrote that thing uh, to the end. And then I typed it up and submitted it and got a really wonderful rejection where they said, keep trying. And, you know, they might've been just being nice, but that's their fault. I did keep trying. <laughs> so <laughs> they shouldn't have encouraged me. So I did keep going, but yeah, that was the mid nineties. And then from, you know, there, a lot of life happened between then and 2011 and a lot of books. I wrote the first book I published, like I said, was nearly departed in Deadwood, the Deadwood mystery series. And between that was the seventh book I wrote. So there were six books that happened before that one went live. And then I did go back and re rework the, some of the earlier ones I'd written. And when I felt I was able to do them justice, then I fixed them, as I like to say, or rewrote big portions and published those as well. Uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's what I'm talking about. So 95, so both Windows and Anne Charles book number one. There we go. <laughs> yes. The first one I typed was on one of those, um, word processors where you type and it shows about, I don't know, 20 words on the screen and then you hit return and it goes like a machine gun and it types it all on the page. That was the first, that was that long ago. Oh my. 
Hey, well, that's good. And it's good that you actually physically wrote a book from beginning to end, because some people may be like, oh, write a book. Oh, you just grabbed a keyboard. It's like, no, 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 it's actually pen to paper. Actually, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was the first one. Just get it. But and that's something I tell new writers um, when they approach or someone who wants to write a book. I always just say, you know, first things first, don't don't get back bogged down in all the books and the how to's write the book and make hit the end because that's hard on its own just getting through the whole thing and then after that then you can start polishing it you know and using it as your either your practice book or make it really shine as your first book amen to that amen to that because it's so darn sure because we can always get bogged down into the details so much from time to time yes um there have been many people over the years who have a book and they talk to me about it and it's it's part way through and it's still part way through and it's that's why you know getting to the end is just so freeing that you've done it okay I did this now now what you know and it gives you I don't know more determination more confidence to go forward I think uh, yeah that's right we need that confidence indeed so with all of your wonderful writing experience and doing this for 20 plus years and winning all these wonderful awards and counting, what keeps you going and keeps you confident with your work? Uh, it's got to be the fans, their feedback, the encouragement, hurry up and write, please. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the emails, you know, really is the heart warming ones where uh, maybe a parent passed or someone was sick in the hospital and they used the, my books to laugh through it because humor really is a big part of my stories. So that I can make someone laugh through the hard times that is motivating because I'm one of those people that when it, chips are down, just let me laugh. If I can laugh, I can get through this. So if I can do the same for someone else and help them keep going forward, then it's worth all the blood, sweat, and tears of putting it, you know, each book out. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Cause humor is probably the best medicine on the planet. I think so. Nothing like a good hearty laugh or one that makes you cry because you're laughing so hard and you can't breathe. Those are the best. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. And then you have the six pack ab afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> what? It, it happens. They show I know. Up. I know. I, I actually, tequila is my game. So, yes, the tequila <laughs> bottle's out. My, my kids will go, why is the tequila bottle out? Are we celebrating or is this a bad time? Could be either. Oh, you'd be like, oh, don't worry. I'm, I'm just trying to make a version two of Tequila Mockingbird. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. I'm a boy. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, speaking of humor, I hear you have this wonderful art-like photo of yourself on a camel as a camel jockey. Oh my gosh, you really did your research. Yes, I do. <laughs> Ninth grade, what do you want to be? Draw, do a painting of what you want to be. That was art class. And my wonderful friend who's so sensible drew herself in a little suit with a briefcase uh, as a social worker. And she is a social worker still. And I painted myself on a camel getting out in the desert because <laughs> I thought it would be really cool to be a camel jockey. It sounded adventurous. But then I learned that really women aren't usually camel jockeys. And now they're, I think it's all um, like little robots or something. But, um, and then I also learned how stinky camels are and they bite and spit. <laughs> so it didn't <laughs> sound so cool <laughs> after I learned that. But for a while, it was a dream, camel jockey. And that came from, again, reading romances in high school, those little white Harlequin romance books where the heroes were these sheiks you know, or uh, these handsome Arab men over there on these covers <laughs> in the stories for these English women. So that spurred my dreams that way. Just like I thought all Greek men were rich oil tycoons or some kind of tycoons too, growing up reading that. <laughs> Learned a lesson there. 
<laughs> That's right. It's like, oh, the books were lies. No, the fiction for real. <laughs> I'm sure there's wonderful of every different kind out there, but not all. Not all, Ann. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, crap, I got to snag another one on a different occasion. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> So, yeah, the camel jockey dream was taken away. And then on to it was on to archaeology after that. So, and that didn't work. I learned how much writing they do and it turned me off. Ironically, now I write. So, I probably should have stuck with archaeology in the beginning and just went forth. <laughs> uh, that's so funny. We actually had an archaeologist on the show a few months ago, VS Holmes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I've talked to V.S. Holmes. Ah, uh, yeah. Wonderful human, that one. Definitely yes. Wonderful human. Yes. I actually bought, um, there's a couple books and I bought a book afterwards that's in my mega to be read pile someday. Ah, uh, yeah. That's right. The pile that becomes a pyramid after a while. <laughs> I know it's I, I really I read so much more before I started writing for a living and I, I really would love to spend more time reading like I used to but I just again you know there's the emails and the social media contact of where's the next book so it keeps me in line uh, I got you so speaking of next books do you think you'll ever write a horror novel of where it's the main character has nothing but a sword and they have to fight a bunch of cows and zombies. <laughs> you know, it might happen. Uh, never say never. That's what I say. Yeah. And, and that's my, yeah, the zombies and the cows. And, you know, there's a really good reason why I'm, I'm nervous around cows. And it's, it's not as crazy and far-fetched as it seems. I grew up on a farm. <laughs> And as a kid, you had to go feed the cows. It was your turn to do the chores. And we had this nice big old hanging feeder that you walk, you know, as a kid, I'd climb up into with a bucket and dump it. And the cows would rush me. Hungry cows rushing you. That's kind of a little nerve wracking. So I started out freaked out a little bit. And then I got lost one time in the, in the mountain or the hills in South Dakota, Black Hills. And I came across a big herd of cattle and the bull was watching me and following me. So it's just added up. I think they know. They, I always joke and tell my husband, I'm on to them. They're out to take over the world. And they know I'm on to them. So they're trying to take me out. <laughs> and the zombies, gosh, I don't know. Of, the, of all the horror things, that brains, you know, that's since a kid, I, my, my brother, He's four and a half years older than me, and he was always into horror movies. Um, and so I got, I was exposed to some zombies pretty early in life. And ever since, oh boy, those things, I can watch some stuff. Like I watched The Walking, Walking Dead for a bit, but oh, it just makes me so uncomfortable. <laughs> it's just <laughs> when they're eating on people, oh, that's just, a, that's, that's creepy. So put cows and zombies together, and that's like my biggest nightmare. <laughs> Zombie cows coming at me. <laughs> Ooh, brains. <laughs> That'd be something. It might be entertaining. It'd be like a B movie, right? Oh, heck yeah. And then one of the characters tries to defend himself using a cactus. Yeah. Oh, boy. I tell you, it's the cactus. Ah. Uh, as my husband likes to say, and everything in our yard, everything out there is out to, what is it, poke you, stick you, or stab you. So you come in all battle bruised, you know, with <coughs> things sticking out of everywhere. You bumped a cactus and it takes you to sit there and pick them all out, every single little poker. It's horrible. <laughs> but they're pretty to look at from a distance. Sweet. Are the Legos in the house too? Yeah. <sighs> That and luckily my kids are a little older now, but yes, um, you, anyone with young kids knows those, that feeling of stepping on a Lego <laughs> when your eyes are still mostly closed and that pain, they really need to make them softer <laughs> with round corners, right? Oh God. <laughs> uh, 
So dark true. So dark true indeed. So since this is far from my first rodeo, is there a question that you wish you'd be asked more often when you're in the guest side of the game? Oh boy, that's tough. Now I can't think of anything. Uh, maybe what's your favorite kind of tequila so we can send it to you? I mean, you can name it if you want. No, I don't really have a favorite. <laughs> I just like it. Some of it, you just need more lemon with it, you know, and others you can just drink straight. Depends on how, you know, the quality of the tequila, but I'm really not picky. That started, you know, in my teen years, not being picky about tequila. So it's just gone on from there. You'd think I'd become a connoisseur, but I'm not. But I do have some wonderful fans who do go to Mexico and, and are one, they're so great. They come to a signing and they give me a bottle of tequila. Then I'm like, you're adopted. Let's, let's fit you in the family. Oh, I'm kidding. I do. It's, you know, truthfully, I like a lot of different drinks, but I do find that tequila is the one for my body that it seems to be wired that it doesn't hit it so hard and leave me crawling on the floor the next day. So I can't really think of, of what I'm trying to think if I were to meet, talk to an author, my questions always tend to be, you know, how are you marketing? What's, what stra you know, strategy are you using? What do you think about audiobooks going forward? That kind of stuff, which is really boring. You know, I can tell you, I do love to go get the mail every day. And that's a question I don't think has ever been asked. Do you enjoy getting the mail? And I do. I love it. The trip to the mailbox out front is one of my favorite things. And it has been since I was a kid because of what's in the box is like a prize every day. Only sometimes it's bills, which is <laughs> like a bag of dog poop in the mailbox, right? So <laughs> there, there's a question nobody's asked. Now I've answered. I love getting the mail <laughs> and I'm really sad on a day. If there's nothing in the mailbox, I feel like, did he forget me? Oh, how could he have forgotten me? I just wanted something in the mailbox. That's pretty pathetic. I don't think my mailman realizes there's so much pressure on him every day to deliver something. <laughs> It'd be funny if he or she was listening to this. I was like, Wait a second. What? <laughs> I know. Oh yeah. That's uh, otherwise it's, it's, you know, my day is sit down, write books, help with the kids, help with homework, do uh, common core math with my kids as they go up through. And I'm no good at common core. I was okay at math, but cuss and swear a little bit about that and, you know, write some more, watch a fun movie or TV and go to sleep and start all over again. There's coffee throughout that, of course. Um, and, and just interact with fans. I'm, I'm pretty good about usually staying online a bit and sometimes too much. <laughs> sometimes I spend all day hanging out online with friends when I should be writing. But especially in this day and age, right? With the virus keeping us all inside and locked up. Oh boy. Yeah, but the virus is kinky. Ah, darn thing. Let's just get through, push on through as best we can. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Best we can, indeed. So I'm guessing the husband's happy that he has the wife of at home helping him out. Because I remember one time I used to <laughs> work extra hard, full time job, and actually stay up to two a.m. Right, <laughs> write your right, books. Right, right. Well, yeah. When I was pregnant, um, way back when, uh, my husband got laid off, and we decided then and there that rather than him find another job at that point, and mine was still going strong that, and it was during the downturn, you know, things were not so good back in 2005, 2007. We decided um, rather than pay for daycare, he'd stay home. And I don't know if he knew what he was getting in for, but we always <laughs> joke that his hair used to be brown and then it went gray <laughs> after kids came. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so then I kept working and I was trying to get published way back when um, doing a full-time day job as a technical writer for banking software, which is just riveting, I'm telling you. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I'd have to come home and um, spend time with the family and and then he and the kids would be wiped out by nine or 10. Uh, and I would stay up late and write and then get up and go to work again. So I did that for several years until uh, this, I had enough readers and, and fan base that I was able to quit. And now 
he's writing as well with me. We have a series, the Deadwood Undertaker series that we write together. So now our kids are doubly confused about if we're talking about real people or not. I mean, you know, they'll walk in <laughs> mid conversation where we, something really dramatic, you know, we're talking about, well, you know, maybe he has this happen and get shot or, you know, he got shot and then this happened and they're like, who got shot? <laughs> and the, no, nobody. It's a character. And they're like, oh gosh, you guys. <laughs> so they're, they don't know whether we're talking about real people anymore or not. And you know, some days we don't either. I think we've been alone <laughs> too much that we're not sure. We, we joke about when we're old, we'll sit around together and talk about all these characters as if they're family members and the drama that they got into. <laughs> It'll be entertaining. We'll think it's all real. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, it works really well because he's, in addition to writing, he's always been there behind the scenes. Uh, I have a saying, in one of my books, I talk about a character that she and technology don't get along. And that's me. I, technology and I, you know, I prefer to take a bat to everything if it doesn't work. And <laughs> he, he saves all our computers and everything from the wrath of Anne. So, uh, yeah, he's he's always been there, whether it be through formatting or he's first editor. Um, he's my hardest editor. I love him, but boy, there's times when it's like, what do you mean you don't like this line? <laughs> what do you mean it's awkward? <laughs> so <laughs> it was, you know, we joke about um, we've had kids together. We've remodeled houses together. It was only a matter of time until we wrote books together. And so now that's kind of what we do. And it... Um, brings it around even more so makes for fun road trips though we we brainstorm a lot about crazy stuff oh that's beautiful right there that's what i'm talking about indeed that's what i'm talking about indeed and it's so interesting too it's like you did all that stuff together now writing books together and heck even <laughs> still getting through some occasional mud that happens when to folks get together with any relationship no less so oh, is yeah. there going to be a fourth book but with you too is there any thoughts on it's, that upcoming book it's in the works yeah uh backside of hell is is what it is i believe i can't remember if it's the backside or backside of hell but yes that's in process already and we actually have a christmas novella that's going to come out in early december in that deadwood undertaker series uh called catawampus christmas carol so old west supernatural a little bit and um christmas all wrapped together so yeah that's we we keep that going and then at the same time now i'm working on uh the deadwood mystery series the contemporary one um number 12 in that series so hoping to have that out in early spring and keep on going you know there was a point it's always fun and uh, when i was just getting ready to quit and I was so excited to be a full-time author and not do that you know other job the tech writing job that I thought this is going to be so exciting writing books and then I quit and I was writing books and I finished one and I thought oh this is what I'm going to do always now and it it was still exciting but a little bit of a slap of reality that you don't get to just write a book and then surf for years on the glory of it you're going to write another book and another book and another book. It's like climbing mountains, you know, by going on your own, hiking through the Himalaya range. And then you get to the edge and you're turning back, you're going to come back through it again because every book is like a mountain on its own. So there's highs and lows, but it's exciting nonetheless and scary when you put it out there for everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah, I could definitely say that again. Yes, indeed. It's like, I'm sending another one of my literary children out to play. <laughs> yeah. Hide under the bed. I'm going to be under the bed for a week. I always tell people, wait till the reviews start coming in. I do have a rather extensive beta reader process. And that helps me not to, you know, take to the bottle every time a book releases. <laughs> because I've already run it through about 50 to 60 people before it goes live. And they're really good at telling me what's wrong or what's, you know, what they liked. So by the time it really goes live, it's already kind of went live just to a smaller audience. So, I, you know, it's that whole pre-screening things they do with movies and see how the audience liked it. So I actually do that. 
with a beta crew that's been there for most of them have been there since, you know, just about the beginning, which is wonderful. They're really helpful in their own ways. Um, so that helps a little with that release, but there's still the stress of, will it go smooth? Will Amazon maybe mess up a file? Not nothing against the big giant Amazon, but they do have issues, you know? So Will everybody be able to read it? Will the illustrations come along with the book this time? Because last time, for some reason, they disappeared. <laughs> so it's always fun. Yeah, you can say that again. I had my issues with Amazon <laughs> myself yes. with my second book, and I was so disappointed. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> Why? I know, right? <laughs> and it's it's one thing after another. And then you read through, you know, from other authors, what they've experienced. And you get a little nervous. It's it's a real, let's cross our fingers and toes and sacrifice a chicken and hope all works well and please the Amazon gods <laughs> because you just don't know what's going to happen. And by chicken, I mean probably a rotisserie chicken from Costco, but otherwise, sacrifice <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> those are so darn good <laughs> well that was random <laughs> <laughs> i know i'm not even being paid by costco for that really <laughs> it's just like up so much <laughs> uh, yeah freaking love it freaking love it so my goodness but yep so for those who may be looking to start their journey heck from your experience heck even with <laughs> <laughs> Amazon horror stories. Any <laughs> advice for the authors out there who may need that encouragement to keep going after they publish their work and they need to get into the marketing process? Okay. First, persistence, never give up. And that sounds really corny and cliche, like something with a cat poster, right? Uh, but it's so true. This is not for the faint of heart. This is a tough gig. It used to be a little easier when there weren't so many playing in the, in the, what is now an ocean, I think of books out there, but it's still, it's still doable. So just keep trying, keep going. And on that note, then in regards to marketing baby steps, uh, I know a lot of people go, well, you're, you've got YouTube channel, you've got your Facebook, you've got this many fans, you've got your email list, you know, on and on and on, and all the things they're supposed to have. And how do you do it? How do you, you know, I don't think I can do all that and write. And that is true. I do spend a good 50% of my time on non-writing things. Uh, and most of that, it would be marketing and social media, but it didn't all happen at once. It wasn't instant and I'm doing it all. It's a, it's baby steps and a slow build I often, because one of my series is uh, about Amaya dig sites down in the Yucatan, I often think of it as I'm building my um, Maya town or empire. So one pyramid or, you know, at a time that I build this building and then work on this building. So enjoy taking your time and building it slowly because, you know, it may seem like if I just hit number one, it would make all the difference in the world over on Amazon. And I'm here to tell you, I've hit number one a few times in different categories. I've been in the top five of Amazon overall. I've had some really high moments, but you do come back down and you have to keep at it because this is really a long-term game if you want to do this for the long term as well. And marketing constantly changes, the game changes, you got to be willing to shift and change and try new things. Oh, uh, yeah, you can say that again, especially nowadays, because you're so right, it is like a freaking ocean out there. It's like, oh, they say blue ocean strategy, go where the ocean's blue. But what happens if all the ocean is red and everybody and their mom's trying to do the whole free book funnel into... Yeah. millions and millions of courses <laughs> right <laughs> exactly it's it's there's a lot of white noise out there uh and that's not to be insulting of anyone else it's just you're trying to reach readers through it all and and that's not even talking about netflix and amazon and t you know the television stuff that's taking entertainment time and gaming you know there's so many different entertainment venues people have to choose from so Finding your, your readers is not easy. 
but it's doable. Ah, uh, yeah, it's mountain doable. <laughs> <laughs> get your backpack, get your cleats, and get a lot of protein bars and dried fruit and head out for the mountain because it's going to take some hiking and climbing. Ah, uh, yeah. And uh, speaking of hiking, I hear you take a pilgrimage to Deadwood, South Dakota every year pre-COVID. I do, I do. Um, yeah, we have an annual Deadwood fan party, and I think this coming year will be number nine if it all gets to happen. And we spend four, three to four days, actually it's up to four days now, where we do different events together. Um, in the middle, on Saturday night, we have a big fan party where we all get together when you can, um, pre-COVID. And I usually, uh, I'll sometimes have guests. Uh, this last year, we had to cancel it, of course, but they're coming next year if it all works out. And that was uh, Black Hills Paranormal Investigators and they're bringing all their equipment and we'll probably tour some uh, the haunted locations with them in Deadwood that um, and have them there with their equipment. So it'll be like you're on a ghost, you know, investigation with them. So <clears throat> we do a lot. We we have a great time and just enjoy hanging out together. And what I love is fans come from all over the place. I've had um, wonderful people way up in Canada, uh, Florida, Texas, from all over. We all drive in and you get to meet people that share your sense of humor. And that I think makes for some good long friendships. And that's what's happened. A lot of these people are not good friends. Um, and that's so cool that they got to meet that way. Ah, uh, yeah, definitely could say that again. That's right. That's right. Building those friendships, those relationships, have your own conglomerate of awesome. Yeah, friends. I mean, what what's the saying? You can't choose your family. You can choose your friends. Now, I love my family, so don't take that wrong, family. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a saying, <laughs> but it's true. You know, you get to choose some wonderful people to be in your friendship family. Darn right. Heck, was my favorite, one of my favorite quotes where it mentions how God gives you friends as an apology for your family. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I might use that at Thanksgiving when we all get to get back together. <laughs> right? well, you could be doing the blessing and include that in the blessing. Thank you for giving me friends. So I could, it's the family I could, no, that wouldn't go well. It'd probably get me kicked out. <laughs> Blame it on the tequila. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh. You started that. It. It's your fault. I'm going to blame you when I get kicked out of Thanksgiving. This is, Tom told me this. He told me to tell you guys this. <laughs> hey, I just inspired something. I didn't <laughs> tell her exactly. <laughs> All right. You can use that excuse, but you know, it'll already have happened. So you're going to be trying to make up for that. Uh, I'm guessing a lot of tequila and chocolate, I imagine. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. Probably purple chocolate. Oh, yeah. Purple chocolate, purple and chocolate. Those are good things together. Uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Almost like PB and J. Almost, but it's chocolate. So it trumps. I think it's, it's far for me, although I do love peanut butter. So. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Well, speaking of magical peanut butter, you know that has nothing to do with this next question. If you don't wake up, <laughs> what's your what's in your magical peanut butter? <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> oh yeah, there's usually puns and peanuts and butter, not butter. <laughs> <laughs> butter, not butter. Oh. Yes, indeed. Woo. Well, coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive, and that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're 25 again, but this time in the current year with all of your knowledge and experience, what advice would you give to yourself? Mm, don't worry so much. You know, I, I'm one of those people that unfortunately worry a lot and obsessive personality 
you know, and I think obsessiveness helps me keep going with the writing, but then add worry to it. So you get obsessive worrying, which is no good. So, you know, life, life is going to happen good and bad, ride the waves, enjoy it as much as you can. It's going to fly by. So I guess that would be the most, just keep your head down when you need to. And, but make sure you look up and see the, you know, wonderful world around you and the people in it. That sounds really, uh, you know, maybe too, uh, sir, not really down to earth, but if you knew how much I worried, <laughs> you'd understand. So the cows have really gotten it to you that bad, huh? Oh man, those cows really messed me up. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably go lay on a couch and talk to somebody with a notebook about it for a while. <laughs> I could just see it, uh, someone, if I, if I started off with that, the doctor would be like, you know what, you might want to seek professional help elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is too weird. <laughs> You're supposed to have like parent issues, right? Or relationship, not, not zombie cows. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> hey, well, the humans were touching them inappropriately for years, so they want to revenge. I, they they're coming they're filling the world with methane it's their goal <laughs> <laughs> i know it's nutty you can see my husband and i have had many conversations about them him rational down down to earth level-headed <laughs> me going they're doing this now <laughs> we drive by a feedlot and he's like don't look don't look ah <laughs> uh, uh. I don't know why I mentioned peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. But don't worry, we're all nuts in our own right. In more ways than one. I think it makes us more fun. That's right. Fun on a bun, indeed. Heck, maybe fun on the honey bun. Oh, and now you got me ready to get some breakfast. Ah, uh, Yeah. So for those who want one of those literary breakfasts where they read one of your magical books, what's the best way for folks to reach out to you? Well, you can go to my website, annecharles.com, and you can find all the different books under the books page and some descriptions of each to get you going. If you are trying to decide which series is best for you, uh, I talk a little bit about each series at the top of the series book series page on my website. So you can kind of see if you want, because I have books that are mystery adventure, romance, humor, no supernatural. And then I have supernatural mixed in on some of the different series. But one thing to know is um, of all the series I have, five currently that I work on one of them the silly circus series is kind of off on its own but the other four all have characters that cross over so you're really entering whichever door you choose to go into you're entering Anne Charles's universe and you'll see characters from other stories that are there and come and go so it's kind of fun if you get into it all and you read all the different books you'll see the crossovers and how it all relates which I think makes it even more fun. It's, you know, miniature Harry Potter world, only Anne Charles. Ah, uh, yeah, that AC world, the world of Anne Charles. <laughs> cowboy hats and purple cowboy boots. I love it. <laughs> and oh, the other thing is, they're not all, you can get ebooks, you can get pre print books, and they're all in audiobooks, except right now for the Undertaker series, but that will be in audio early next year. It's in the process right now. So, if you like audio instead, you can find audio out there of them as well. Woohoo! Are you reading any of them yourself? I am rereading Deadwood Mystery Series number 11 at the moment because I'm working on 12. So I'm kind of um, keeping fresh in my mind what happened last time so I can uh, continue on. The, these are not like standalones. You could read them standalone because I'll give you some background in each of them about something that happened, but they're really meant to be read as a series, you know, kind of going through them. So I reread every time I write the next one, I'll reread the whole series. And that's getting to be a hardship because I have to read 11 books now before I start a new one on the Deadwood series. And that takes some time. You'd think I'd be 
If I was younger, back to that 25-year-old self, maybe I'd remember every little detail, but <laughs> there's a lot of details. So rereading really helps fuel my ma- imagination and get me back, you know, rolling again. Sweet. So is your voice behind any of the audiobooks? No, I'm not that talented. And I yawn when I read aloud too much. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I'd probably put everybody listening to sleep. We'd have to keep doing cut. She yawned again. (laughs) Uh, Apparently, I just don't get enough oxygen to my brain when I read aloud too much or something. So uh, I don't know how people do it. It amazes me because I I seriously yawn a lot when I read. So somehow they make it happen. Um, But there's some amazing talent behind each series that's being read. Uh, The narrators that we've chosen are so good they'll give me chills they'll make me laugh out loud everything so they're definitely fun books to listen to woohoo fun on a bun indeed fun on a bun indeed that's what i'm talking about well there you have it folks head over to anncharles.com pick a random series read it take it hold it love it all of it and you heard it right, folks. You read, read through 11 books at a time. So, heck, by the time you buy all 11 of those books and you read through all of them, 12 will probably be out at this time. So, definitely check it out like a library book. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, any parting words before we close up shop, Anne? Thank you for having me this morning. You made me laugh a lot, and I haven't even had more than one cup of coffee. So, that's that's something. You're just you're you're a fun host, and I appreciate you having me on here. How's it going, my friend? I'm glad you made it to the end. That shows that you really enjoyed what you heard and you are an uncommon finisher. Thanks for giving this show a listen. If you really want to help out the show, be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and share this with someone that you care about or someone that needs to hear this message because you want to spread this podcast around like butter on bread if that's your type of thing and if it's not your type of thing still spread it around anyway because good stuff needs to be shared with good people like yourself